Welcome to another edition of uh, Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks, as always, for making your way here, checking the thing out, uh, the series out. Uh, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. But I have three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists. And uh, you will notice that I am not in my basement as I live these days. I am in the greenhouse in Albany, Indiana, with Shane and Matt of Houndmouth. Fellas, hello. Kyle, good to see you again. Good to see you both. It is good to see you. Yeah. Uh, it, you're back with a brand new record called Good For You. Um, and uh, and as we as we see, uh, recorded right here, uh, back home again. How much of the record was done here? Um, like 90%. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, now, is that because you wanted to? Or is this, like, born out of, like, lockdown pandemic and, and but we have this space? No, we did it before the pandemic. We, wanted, we wanted to do it here. Our producer... Brad Cook came to New Albany, and we're like, "Can we make a record in this house?" And he's like, "Yeah, totally." So, we and it was nice getting back to like the space. Yeah, yeah, because we hadn't recorded here since the EP, the first EP we put out. We recorded the first EP on like a two input, like uh-huh. inbox. Yeah, in that room, we just put it on like a little table. Yeah, like and a that was the first EP. Table. Yeah, yeah. Card table. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible how good that first EP sounds, just considering. You know, the, the, the humble beginnings. Yeah, I mean, every drum would... I mean, we just had two mics on drums, obviously, and then you had to multi-track everything. So it's like you're building a band without... Like, we played, we rehearsed the songs, but we didn't have the capability to record everybody at the same time. Right. So we had to, like, just multi-track everybody. It's like, your turn. All right. <laughs> so when you say, can we record in this space, like, what's... the Yeah, the only thing holding us back was, like, gear, I guess. Uh-huh. And... and you spend so much time in studios and you're like, it's also treated and this is not treated, but adds to the right the, the sound charm. Yeah, space there. Uh, who, who are the pictures? Are they anybody of note? Yeah, those are great, great, maybe great grandparents. Uh, August Barth, and I forget her name. She'll follow you around the room, so. Here we are around Halloween. What are the ghost stories of this place? Definitely not haunted, actually. I lived here for a few years and the basement is probably the most terrifying place, but I've never had any yeah. kind of weird yeah. experience. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell me where we are now. This is uh, kind of kind of the throw it all room. You just kind of throw it when we come home from tour. This is usually where the gear lands. Yeah. Because you don't record in this room a lot because there's not any carpeting. So we did it for a minute. We had gear in here. It didn't feel right. Yeah. And quickly went back. <laughs> Yeah. We're vibe guys. Vibe is <laughs> off. What was this originally? This was a dining room. Oh and right. There was this huge table. I forgot about yeah. that. It was it was a huge dining room table um, with a bunch of huge like huge chairs. Massive. And, yeah, it, like a bunch of fake grapes everywhere. Yeah. Like glass grapes on it. <laughs> the um, studio, like the desk, has come a long way. So what was the first time you actually got in a, in a real studio? That was, um, we went to, uh, when Ratterman had the um, church, uh-huh. when he was at the church, mm-hmm. and we just, that was the first time we like recorded live, and then after that we went to Dave Cobb in Nashville, and then after that we, were, we did, did a lot of stuff in LA and like Sonic Ranch, and so finally to like come back here for this record was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting all the places that you've talked about and the sounds of every single one of the Corresponding releases that goes along with it, yeah, that. yeah. Like and and and, and specifically it, the juxtaposition of L.A. Yeah, and the last record and what that was sounding like with radio and that whole gang, and and then yeah. hearing, like, when you talked about wanting to record here, was that part of it? Yeah, it's very intentional. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How did you all find the place to begin with? Um, it was my grandparents' house. Oh, so so the pictures were already here. Yeah. Okay. Those came with the house. <laughs> and all these books. When they passed, uh, my dad just kind of left it vacant, really. And, and I slowly moved gear in, and then Matt hit me up, and he brought his gear. Jeez. And slowly, obviously, just more gear has come in. Yeah. When you, when, like, I met him, or, like, I came over here, like, right out of college. And I was like, hey, you want to jam? And he was like, yeah, here's my address. And when you're in college, you think you're like gonna go to some like shanty, 
you know, <laughs> and you show up at a place like this, and yeah. it's like, whoa. You gotta be in a band with me just because you hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you hear the thing, like, you get to be in the band because you own a drum set, not because you're a drummer. Because uh-huh. yeah. you own a drum set, but luckily you had the house to go home. <laughs> yeah, luckily. Yeah, the next day I, like, brought all my stuff over. Yeah. To find a group of people who, uh, I mean, and you were all in New Orleans, it's not like it's the biggest community, and to have found each other with a shared sense of music, I assume. Yeah. Uh, and everybody sort of got the same direction as what they're going. I mean, that's... That's pretty lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. fortunate. Yeah. But I, I, yeah, I feel like you just go through life and you kind of like find people, you know? Everybody kind of finds their people. Right. And this one had a house on top of it. So. No doubt. <laughs> First off, I'll compliment the poetry on this record. Like, I don't know if you did a lyrics or if you split the lyrics or, or what, because you're both songwriters, but there's something different. This and it's a hard question to ask because I'm, that, I, that's what I'm getting to. Like, you've always been great lyricists, but there's something very poetic about this record. I don't know if you could attribute that to anything specifically. I spent a lot of time alone up upstairs. <laughs> yeah. And Mac can just lock himself in a room upstairs and just write words. Yeah. So I think that was a luxury that you haven't really had. In yeah. a no, I hadn't had like alone time in a long time. And then like walking around town, familiarity, walk down and get a water. I, I go to the farthest place to get water, so <laughs> this is the longest walk. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can attribute to anything different. Um, um, just reeling through th- some thoughts and, you know, and reading some stuff, reading some stories. I always like telling stories, but uh, yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, it's populated with characters again. And, and, and we talked about this. I mean, you, you like to write a lot of character based songs I don't know if I'm, I'm I'm off I feel like there wasn't as many on the last record and, and this is the return like we've talked about CD characters yeah. in the past but like who who are the people on this album well some of it some of them are like people we've met and some of them are um, kind of just made up characters to embellish a story or something uh, well, some of them it's me in there mm-hmm. I, I tend to like not Right, like about myself, so I like um, kind of deflect uh, my own feelings and 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 mask them. <laughs> yeah. Do you get the passers by at all? We've been rehearsing and people have come in and just like off the street and are like, "What's going on in here?" Just walked in the door. And you don't know him. No. Yeah. And uh, one guy walked in and he had a saxophone. And he had a, it was, he was on a bike and he had a lunchbox in the back with a bunch of fish in it. He had just been fishing in the Ohio. With a saxophone? Is yeah. that how he catches well, the fish? <laughs> he, he, he plays that by the river to make some money. Uh-huh. And he came in and we recorded a bit with him. And then that saxophone ended up going on um, one of our records. Oh. Yeah. So that's what you, if you know where this place is, you could be on a hound mouth right now. <laughs> All you need is a saxophone and a fish. So is there any autobiography with, like, I mean, you, you've sort of said that, but uh, as far as, like, at some point if you're writing a story, it seems to me like you would have to maybe uh, look into your own life, and then what, do you just cloud it up? Um, it's not necessarily like clouding it up. It's like um, trying to um, find... It's like trying to get out what's what I what I'm as cloudy inside, I guess. Yeah. If it's kind of like therapy, writing's very therapeutic. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah. What about from your side, Jane? I mean, all these songs, uh, you know, according to the credits, are co-written. I mean, a couple of them are even just the two of you all. Like, what was it about this album for you when you came into it? Like, how did you want to approach it? I feel like I'm just here to help. You know, <laughs> like. uh it's it's fun to go through these evolutions of these songs that he wrote and uh, just give my two cents every once in a while. And uh, yeah, I feel like a lot more of you maybe slipped through in this album in a good way. Yeah. Almost. Yeah, I tend to write and then bring things to the table. And then um, it's a nice having a group of people that you trust and like, everybody's on the same page and like I'm struggling with this part and and everybody kind of hones in and like helps out yeah the geography is the other part of this I mean when you have the characters but there is so much geography every song takes me to a different spot like 
first off, what is the America that we're seeing, that we're hearing about on this record? Because there's a lot of America. It's it's home base is Midwest on this record. It's like, uh, but I feel like there's like a Southern Gothic, t- like Southern Gothic tendencies. Mm-hmm. And the, like um, Midwest, everybody's like really nice, you know. Like it's the, everybody's just that's the label that the Midwest has. But I feel like it's there's more of a darkness to it that nobody knows about. Um, like in the Midwest, nobody's clamoring, especially in this town. Like nobody's clamoring to a spot. And there's not a set place. It's like really cool that everybody's going to. It's like you kind of have to search around for for things and you have to like keep your eyes peeled how important is it for wherever that song is happening and again there's so many different spots you know around the country that these songs do took place in like how important is the spot and i'm thinking in a sense like when you listen to springsteen's born to run you know that that character has to be in new jersey like he says it but that character his life is like it is because he's in new jersey right like, how important is that to the characters in these songs for you as to where you place them in the world? Yeah, it's huge. Like, places, everything. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, like, even, like, my favorite movies, there's not, there's really not a lot happening. Like, there doesn't need to be explosions in movies, you know? <laughs> like, it just needs a good story and, like, a place that the people can exist yeah. and show why these people are these this way. Of course, one of those places, uh, you bring it back to Kentucky and the Derby. Well, yeah. It sounds like the Derby anyway. I mean, you're talking about the horses. It's not the first time. Uh, you had the song for no one, of course, that made the reference that everyone loves to quote when they're, you know, talking about great Houndmouth lyrics. What brought you back there this time? It's like a picture. It's not like yeah, the songs are like, it's like writing, like a picture. Right. And, and I, I don't know where it's going to end up. And sometimes I'll write something I don't know, like if it's, I don't know what it's about necessarily while I'm writing it, and I kind of piece it together by the end. But it seems to me like Good For You is about um, detaching from money and um, all the connotations that come from like where you're from. and like. Um, That's interesting what you're saying, though, because, because your songs do sound fully realized as a story. Um, you know, I was talking about Sam Shepard the other day. You know, Sam Shepard, the actor also a playwright, the way he writes about people and about characters. Mm. That's what I think of, uh, especially when I'm listening to what you all do, because there's that sense. So, so it's interesting that you start the journey before you even realize where the journey is going to take it, because by the end of it, like it, that picture does look fully painted, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, so then I would ask, what brings you back to the Derby a second time? Like, why do you think that's what, other than, you know, we're right across the river. Yeah. It's like, a, it seems like it's always a monumental moment, like every year. Yeah. Like, everybody comes to Kentucky for the Derby. Um, and it's just, it's always been like, I've been a few times, but it's always just been like a big part of my life, but also not really. Like, it's just. It's just kind of there. <laughs> all, eyes fo- all eyes focus on Kentucky, like at Churchill Downs, yeah. one day of the year. Well, it's it's interesting the parallel then because uh, you know the the lead radio single on this uh, Las Vegas, you know, and, and what we're talking about is gambling. You know, it's like yeah. like again, uh, you know, whoever these people are in these songs, money plays a big part of it in, in, in some way. How do we end up in Vegas? Um. Uh. Yeah. Like just how, like the Derby is always spiking my interest. Like so, is, I've I've gambled my whole life too. Like. There's a casino down the road. I still go. I still like play poker to like escape. I like love the conversation at poker tables because it ha- it's like it's not like any other aspect of my life. Nobody's talking about music. Nobody's talking about like anything. It's right. just you're just there playing this game. And uh, and they just recently like revamped it too, so it's all like nice and new. Yeah. Like you don't mind if you hit, fell down on the floor at this point because. <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> like you'd have to bathe in bleach for a while. The last time I was at the boat, uh, <laughs> the, the boat, the boat is gone. The other point in Vegas, and and in the song Las Vegas, and I'm taking this from 
maybe it's a press sheet, maybe it's a review or something, the way they talked about it, but there was this idea, especially of Elvis and his arrival in the song, of maybe a misspent youth or just a youth of the past or whatever it is. And I only say that in context of now here you all are, grown-ass adults <laughs> with families, you know, with, with kids and whole thing, and, like, how much of that makes its way into those little moments in the songs? Yeah, uh, yeah misspent youth, for sure. Like, it, you can't escape it, you know? Like, you, you spend your youth, like, being a degenerate. Not, like, all the way, but, you know. Yeah. Um, like, you spend your youth gambling, doing, like, living that like like bar scenes playing darts all that stuff and it's just like part of you yeah. and like that song vegas like I wrote that in like 20 minutes like that one just like sometimes things just like come out just like inherent mm -hmm. how is the you know that's usually the obvious question for any musicians especially when you, you get kids like has that affected how you all approach your career at this point definitely yeah like uh so like i had just had my kid right before the pandemic and Matt had his as well. And like, uh, so for me, it was like a lot harder to get down to work a lot. And, uh, and so and I feel like Matt's got that all figured out on when he can schedule and come down and really put in the work. And then I can come in and like try to record it or, uh, you know, help write some it helps like, like having kids like help solidify a role oh, you yeah. know i feel like yeah. in a schedule because i never had a schedule so it's like i like living on a schedule now and uh yeah but like i would think like it would be harder to get like private space when you're home um, and all that's going on yes and no but like uh yeah like our families like know the process too. Like they understand that it just takes time and space. Yeah. So, and the luck, the good thing about that is that you're still here, so you can still come home at the end of the day. And it's right. not like you're, you know, three thousand miles away. Have they been to the shows? Have they have they seen you all work? Yeah, they don't care. Uh, no, of yeah. course no, they don't. They don't no, care. They don't. <laughs> when you're back home in a space like this, like how much does that influence the actual way you write a song compared to how you did the last record? Yeah. So like. It, it very like LA it was like you're looking for external things mm -hmm. and here it's like you go in inward and it's like it comes out a lot better yeah. like how are you used to yeah for me it's been great like having guitar around the house because writing is such a it's like it's a lonesome activity mm -hmm. but like now the kids run around it's like I can just sit there and write and it's almost like it rewires the way that I approach songwriting because it's more freeing now. There's just, I'm doing it in front of people all the time. It's like bath time where I'm just, and they don't care what I'm writing, you know? And it's great. It's nice to, to, to strum a guitar in front of people and they don't give a shit about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you're just in your element trying to figure some stuff out. You're, yeah. It just feels homey. I want to know exactly which song was written at bath time. <laughs> at almost every one. <laughs> like, parts to every song has been written at bath time. <laughs> when I re-listen to this, I'm just going to have that in mind now. When I go back and hear this. <laughs> uh, back on the road for one more spot, too, and just outside of Vegas, because um, I don't actually know if the song is there, but, but we've got UFOs, you've got vampires, and you've got werewolves. And they all make a spot on this record. And, 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 and it's just, why? What's... I don't know. It's just like things bouncing around up there. Like, yeah. you, I don't know. Like, sometimes it's as simple as I like this word. I like this image. So, like, how is that going to come out? How is that going to fit? And, and all those characters have like a, the connotations attached to them. So, it's like you can use the characters to explain things without having to really explain it. Right. Yeah. Right. And the, uh, what, do you, what would you think? Like, and the metaphysical. Ends up taking over and showing its play. <laughs> it makes it for some fun adventures. Um, I do want to hit. There was a there was a song that came out uh, before the album was "Some Paradise," mm -hmm. which I thought for a minute maybe like did you all consider that like doing a full recording of that? No, no. Like, uh, that just no. lives as it was. Yeah, like um, yeah. Somebody had sent us a story, uh, like they had um, sent us a voice memo of 
them telling a story about how they met their fiance and went on a boat trip. And the, we actually, it was like an assignment for a, like a podcast or something. And we had to write a song about, about this voice memo that came through. So we all just sat and listened to it a couple of times, picked out parts of the story that were attractive and then it's just assembled words in a way. Yeah. And, and, we had musical ideas, so then they started lending them to that, and and it came out with a good song, I think, and uh, and then that was that. We just sent it to the to the show for the podcast and released it, and then didn't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first off, I loved it. It took me a little while to figure out why it was so familiar, and it, there's a little melody in there of "Simple Twist of Fate." That's right. Yeah, I don't know if they yes, like. Sir. Was that just one of those coincidental? Like, I mean, it's a great song, you know. Yeah, yeah. Or was that actually part of the plan? No, I remember like playing around with chords that I, I I've always liked that song. Mm-hmm. Like, and I've never been able to like escape that song. I love it so yeah. much. So yeah, I can totally see how that how that came out. Yeah. Um, make it to midnight on the record. Uh, mm-hmm. It feel like may I don't know if it comes from the same spot, but it kind of touches that just a little bit less. Yeah, it's that like high yeah little, it's that little high bit which is just push. a thing it's just a yeah, yeah. you know a thing but right, it's right. one of those iconic things you yeah. know like i don't know i was never really a songwriter and and one of the reasons why is because i thought always thought i listened to way too much music like that's all i would do it's like no i can't do that can't do that totally so like writing it I, people would ask me like what were you listening to at the time like nothing nothing because if i do it can go bad yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be it south side and sun in the valley yeah where are these songs now? I don't know. What's the know. life of these songs? They're on the computer somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these are the tracks you played live, I'm guessing. People uh-huh. like grabbed onto. Like any plans to record them? Um, yeah, I don't know. We, oh, we released like before pandemic or something or during we released a. Yeah, just a video, just a live Not video. Not even that. We released like a thing, like a live from the greenhouse on like Bandcamp oh, band or camp. something. Uh-huh. Yeah. That was on there, right? The, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. It was just like the one day thing that they do. We just do stuff <laughs> for fun sometimes. <laughs> then, then forget about it altogether. It's yeah. like, what is that song? Yeah. <laughs> People online, man. Yeah, they keep track of it. That's the thing. You can't just brush it off because they keep track of yeah, it. Yeah, and they know what that's fine. Yeah. And they can, they're going to keep talking about it and we'll probably never address it. <laughs> <laughs> that checks. That checks. <laughs> uh, I love this record. I really do. Um, Thank you. I mean, you guys know I, I love what you guys do. I've always been a fan, but there is something that's really resonating with this one, uh, with me, uh, at least. So, you know, thanks for doing what you all do, and uh, congrats! Thanks, man. Thank congrats. you.